So guys, in this exercise, I'd like to show you a few things, mostly how to make really nice, lovely photo frames. Your favourite images, and you can put borders around them and you can make them look really nice. Now in that one we've got just a gentle circle, but you could put any shape you like. You could put hearts in there, for example. One large heart or many little hearts. Let's go back to that. There's one there that's just a clean circle. Same uh, girl image, but just a circle. Now, there we go. It's just a circle cut out of a shape. How do you cut them out? You can do this in Affinity Photo version 2.5. And this one's done on the iPad Mini 6. So you can do it anywhere on a budget. Let's go to that one. That one there is slightly different. It's got three layers. Now what could be simpler than that? We go back here, we go to that one there. How many layers? One layer. Is How do you do that in one layer? It's easy. There's an SVG file that we've already got loaded in. It's just plain SVG brought into a, a document of its own. And that's another one that I did. It's exactly the same. It's two layers, a yellow rectangle and the layer there. Now of course that one's going to show over the top of that one, but I'll show you in a moment how to cut them out. We're going to start by replicating this one here. And I'd like to show you this one replicated. Quite easy. Let's So let's go do that. We'll create a new document. New document. And in this case I've got a 6x4 photo, if I can find them really quickly here. 6x4. Do we want margins? No margins. General. Now the page width is 6x4, so it's the wrong way around. I want it as portrait. There we go. Width is 6 4 height is 6. That's just what we want. Now I don't want a transparent background. I want to save it with white. So let's create the document. There we go. Just to show that you don't need a transparent background for this to work. There's no layer there of course at the moment. So what we'll do, step by step, is I'll turn on rectangles here in the shape maker and I'll change that to a nice pale blue and we'll draw out a rectangle. Turn on the magnet there, which is the, there we go. See that tool there? That will make sure that the square lines up on the edge. You can see it as it goes there, those red and blue lines, red and green lines. We know it's exactly in place. We've got a rectangle there. Now to turn off those lines, because if you try and do something there, you will be altering the size of that rectangle. Turn on the Move tool to there. Just touch anywhere on the document and it creates, um, takes away those lines. What I want to do here, while we've got that blue rectangle um, selected, we go down here to there and create an ellipse because what I want to put in here is the inner circle that's going to highlight the portrait. It might be a portrait of your mum, your girlfriend, your sister, your brother, your uncle, your aunt, it could be anyone. Now see the sizes over here are slightly different. I'm going to make them neat 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches Okay, now that's a perfect circle. Turn your move tool and it's you can see the the snapping tool is on, so you've got your red and your green lines. Tell you it's exactly in the center. Go back and have a look here. There's an ellipse and a rectangle. Now if I select them both, you'll see how easy this is in a moment. So what I can do is go now move tool selected go to Geometry and Subtract. Now you can see there's a, that's cut right through to the background. You can see in the layer there 
where it doesn't actually show the background, it shows the hatchwork and it's turned it into a curve and it's transparent. Now, what can I do? Let's find the image that we want to put behind there because we're going to photo frame this and we'll call it P-O-R-T-R-A-I-T -R -R we're going to look for a portrait of a girl now can I find the same portrait? there she is we'll put her over there right in the center very neat very neat but gigantic in size it's obviously not what we want so we want to select that. Make sure you select the anchor point as the center so that it contracts into the area that we're looking at because I'm going to set the width to four inches. Turn on, sorry, turn on the anchor point. Set the width to four inches. Click OK. Now you can see the image is exactly four inches wide. We can make it a bit smaller because I, I only want it not five and a half inches high. I would prefer it to be four inches high. There we go. Now you've got to leave the anchor on so that it reduces proportionally. Now you think to yourself, well that's a fat lot of good. It's just an image on a blue background. But we want to put her in the circle. And there she is. Isn't that perfect? Now, move tool is on. Whoops, move tool is on there. Because what I want to do is move her down slightly so she's still centered horizontally, but she's a little bit better placed in the circle. Now you think, hmm, that's all very well. Tap outside and you can see it's a nice image inside a blue circle, inside a circle that's in a blue background. And of course, you can make that any color you like. But what I want to do is take that circle and duplicate it. So we now have the duplicate circle. Now I'll just turn that off for a moment. And we'll select our original circle. And we'll go to Special Effects here. And turn on Gaussian Blur, which is on there. Now we'll the blurred edges. So it's a really nice soft blue image around there. But it's also created the border right around the edge, which is a, a soft blue. We don't want the outer edges soft. Well, you might do if you want it. Just leave it like that. But now if we turn this layer on, you can see it comes back, but it hardens up the edge. Now I don't want that edge hardened up, so go back to the Move tool. We'll drag the whole image out there a bit. Now what I want to do is increase the size of that. Let's see if it shows up in here. It's 4 by 6. Let's make that 4.5. And you can see that it's moved the whole thing out. But it's also left a hard edge around the inside, which is not a lot of good. So what we've got to do is, because you don't want that hard edge around the inside, you want it soft. So we've got to go back there and do that, go back to there so that we've got that one selected. Now you've got to drag this out by hand. So that that circle, that hard edge circle, enlarges as well. As long as you don't go out to the edge, you can see around the edge of the main rectangle that it's quite solid, but the main circle is still very soft. We touch anywhere and there's your nice blurred image. A lovely portrait. Well, I think it is anyway. And that's how you'd actually do that. That's wonderful. Now, of course, you can have that's no good, is it? But you've only got to enlarge the image inside there, and it's the right size. 
but of course you can reduce that and do what you like with it. Now we're back there, you can see it's very similar to the original we've got there. This one here was the original, even simpler you see, it's just the image behind the layer. Let's create that one for you so you know you've got the same thing, new, new document. It's exactly the same as before, page width 4 inches, OK. There we go. Let's bring it up there, put that there. Step 1, step 2, step 3, rectangle, change the colour to red. Put a red rectangle in there. Create an ellipse, just touch there, so it's, there's our ellipse there. Set the ellipse, anchor in the centre. If you forget to do that, it doesn't really matter because you can go back and do it again. Don't put the anchor on now because you're doing this by hand, by sight. 2.5, there we go, an exact circle, move tool. Put the, put the circle in the centre, select the rectangle as well, move tool still selected, go to the subtract and there it is, white circle in the middle. Now because I'm on an iPad Mini 6 I've got to scroll these up and down. You won't have to do that if you've got a big iPad. P-O-R-T-R-A-I-T I might add this works exactly the same way on the desktop, only of course the controls are a little bit different in different places. Now, do you remember what size that we made that girl? There we go, let's go down to there, anchor's still in the centre. Now we want it as neat as we can get, so this time you've got to leave the anchor on, so we don't want a really squished up face, we want a face that's been reduced in size proportionally. Now that's only four inches wide, let's make it three inches wide and the height will adjust accordingly. There it is there and you simply drag that image to the bottom of that stack and there she is neatly placed inside. Isn't that marvellous? Tap anywhere there, blue line's gone, you can export that. So let's go back to there. Now this one is much the same. This is an SVG file, so let's go to there and this one here is a red background with the SVG placed on it. Let's go back to there. We'll create a new document, new document, same thing, Let's make this one a different colour. We'll go to the rectangle, open up a rectangle, make it a different colour. What do you think? A nice, nice yellowy, sandy background. Bring that down. Put that up there. Snapping tool is still on. Tap that there. Now, how do we get the SVG file on there? Well, we've loaded in the SVG file into its own document, which is there. Let me show you how to do that. We want to import a document, not from Affinity Photo, but from where I keep them on Dropbox. And I have them down here. Just give me a moment to find them. Affinity Assets. And in Affinity Assets, I have LMNOPQR S Islamic Islamic Don't want them by date, want them by kind A B C D E F G H H H H Islamic images. So let's put one in that's slightly different than the one I've got there. Okay. That one looks good. That's opened up an SVG file. If you just place them, it brings it in as 
not something you can use. It brings it in as a smart object. Now there it is there at the top of the stack. So let's go back and open that up again. Go to there, copy the image. You can see it's a it's a full SVG file. We've copied the image. Copy. I hope I'm not going too fast here. Then we go back to our new untitled yellow document that we just created. You can see it there. Now our copied image, let's just paste it. Back to the move tool. Bring it up there because we've got to reduce it in size obviously. There we go. Make sure it's the centered. Now it's 17 by 15. We only want it 4 inches wide. So let's make it 3.5 brings it up and pops it down there so we've popped it in there we've exactly centered it now you've got a layer there which is actually an SVG file you can see it's still got all those there easy and we've got that there let's take the top one add it to selection the move tool is still on there we go subtract now that's cut it right through. You've got a yellow background and there's nothing behind that at all. That's gone right through to the base layer. If that was a transparent layer behind it, behind the yellow, it's cut right through the yellow, you would see the transparency there. Now you can put something else behind that quite easily. Let's select that. Could I put an image behind that? Of course I could. But maybe I don't want to. Maybe I want to put something behind there that's a little easier to deal with. Drag out a rectangle. It doesn't matter what colour it is because you're going to change it any moment. The rectangle's now below the curves. Let's change the rectangle to a dark sandy colour. There we go. Now you've got exactly the text you want in the right colour that you want. Too easy. OK, look at all that wonderful stuff you just created with a few easy strokes. That one there, two layers. That lovely one there, two layers. This lovely one here with the nice Gaussian blur three layers. Couldn't be simpler. I hope you've enjoyed it. Show it to your friends. Remember to subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it when you subscribe and click the like button and the bell to be reminded of when I put new videos on there for your benefit. Thanks very much for watching. See you in the next video.